you're on. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 12 May 2014 Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, all members are present or accounted for. And uh, public comment. Anybody for public comment seeing none? The trampling mob. Community announcements. Mr. Waddell. Nothing. Mr. Woolsey. Nothing, sir. Okay. I have a, uh, a note here from uh, Jay Diener on the Conservation Commission inviting everyone to attend a green infrastructure meeting at the Lane Memorial Library on Wednesday, May 14th. The meeting will be from 6.30 till 8.00 and they'll inform property owners in the way they can manage stormwater and reduce flooding on their property. A discussion about rain and gardens will include. Also on Saturday morning, May 17th, starting at 9 a.m., they will be installing and demonstration rain gardens at the Winnicott Roadside of the Lane Library. Everybody's invited to attend, observe, ask questions, and even help if they want. But these events are hosted by the Rockingham Planning Commission, the Seabrook and Hampton Estuary Alliance, and the Hampton Conservation Committee. Also in addition on Saturday, May 17th, the Hampton Conservation Committee is holding their annual painted <coughs> rain barrel silent auction in conjunction with the Hampton Garden Club plant sale in the parking lot at the town hall. These barrels are painted by Donna Boardman's eighth grade class at Hampton Academy and will be on display on the town hall from Wednesday through Friday. The auction starts at 9 a.m., and the winners will be announced at, at, announced at 1. Winners not at the auction at 1 will be contacted to pick up their rain barrels. So, and the only thing I'd also like to say is that our thoughts and prayers go out for public safety in Brentwood tonight as they deal with an emergency they have over there. Thank you very much, Mr. Bridal. Roman 3 consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I will so move the consent agenda. A second. Second. Mr. Bridal, all those in favor? Unanimous, 4 0. Thank you. Roman, four appointments. One, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor, 2014 tax warrant, first half July tax bills, four 2013 abatements, two recommended denials, and two recommended refunds. Sir, the floor is yours. Good evening. Thank you. Um, first, I have the first uh, warrant for 2014. Um, I did give you a copy of the warrant totals. The total for the first half is $25,281,177.29. Do you have any questions? Um, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions for the assessor? Mr. Waddell. No. Off the top of your head, and you may not remember, comparison between that and last year, do you have any? Well, la last year different tax rates, so it's hard to compare. But just I to mean let the you know, overall total. Well, we're up. Values are up about 1.2 percent for this year, so our taxable value again has increased about 30 plus million. Good. So um, you should see a little bit of a. We like taxable value. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Bud. No. Okay. Motion. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I have four um, 2013 abatement uh, recommendations. Uh, two of them are recommended for denial. Um, if you read the um, text that I gave you, you'll understand the reasons for those. And I have two for uh, recommended for refunds, totaling $1,848.31. Again, if you have any questions. Mr. Chairman, I will so move the two recommended uh, refunds, Roman 2, on Mr. Tinker's uh, appointment. And that was for the refunds, you for said? The refunds. Okay, and, and denials, are you making any? Well, let's get the refunds out of the way, and then I'll do denials. How about Is that? there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Unanimous? Yes, unanimous. I uh, will move that uh, we accept the Chief Assessor's two recommended denials 
uh, so stated in Roman 1. And a second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yep. That was quick. <laughs> Roman 4, <laughs> number 2. Keith Noyes, Department of Public Works Director. You mm moved -hmm. too quick for me. I'm glad I wasn't late. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be I thought I'd be getting lucky to get on about 8:30. You have myriad issues, but I, I will uh, give you the floor, sir. So the first item is uh, asking the selectmen to do the pro proclamation for National Public Works Week. Wonderful. If I may read that, sir. Thank you. And this is a proclamation: the Town of Hampton, the National Public Works Week, whereas Public Works infrastructure. Facilities and services are of vital importance to the health, safety, and well-being of the people of the town of Hampton and our visitors. And whereas such facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals, engineers, managers, employees who are responsible for and must plan, design, build, operate, and maintain the transportation, wastewater treatment, solid waste, and recycling handling systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential to serve our residents and businesses and whereas it is the public interest for the citizens, civic leaders and children in the United States of America to gain knowledge of and to maintain a progressive interest and understand the importance of public works and public works programs and whereas New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan has proclaimed 18 May 2014 through 24 May 2014 as National Public Works Week in New Hampshire. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen, call upon all residents and businesses <coughs> of Hampton to recognize and appreciate the contributions that all members of our Public Works Department team make every day to ensure our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Thank you, Director. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to add to that that, you know, I'm coming on my third year here in Hampton, and um, I'm just continued to be impressed with quality of the men and women at Public Works and their dedication to this town and uh, how on a day-to-day -day basis they do work hard to, to deliver essential services that I think that we all take for granted at times because it's things that we just don't, we get it so often that we just take it for granted but then when something goes wrong it, it really does make you appreciate how valuable our public works team is in not only serving the public but working as a team within the community with police and fire and recreation and all the other departments. So um, I just think we've got a good group of men and women down there and I uh, appreciate the board's recognition of them. I would like to add that we're going to have next Tuesday uh, in celebration of uh, National Public Works Week, we're going to have our annual employee appreciation lunch at 1 o'clock and as always, uh, all, all the board members and town manager are more than welcome to attend that. Um, festivity and we usually have some type of training opportunity that afternoon as well. So uh, once again, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So DPW Manpower Report. Um, this is uh, the purpose of this report that I put together is to brief the Board of Selectmen on the status of uh, staffing levels at Public Works and to take uh, an opportunity, whereas right now we have a couple of vacancies of some part-time positions at Public Works, and my staff and I have looked at those uh, positions, and I wanted to make a, have a request on making some changes in that. But stepping back just for a moment, um, there's no doubt that solid waste and recycling uh, collection in this town takes a huge toll on Public Works manpower. And one of the things that's unique in Hampton that most other communities don't have to face, and this is the third community I've worked in public works, and neither of the two communities had to face the same issue as we do, is how we go from six months in the wintertime of relatively um, static levels of, of, um, of collection volumes, and then about the beginning of April through middle of June it starts ramping up and then considerably to the point where we double our load and then right after the seafood festival there's a sharp decline for about a month, month and a half and then it goes back into the six month winter mode and that really is very difficult for us to plan work uh, because we're utilizing the resources because as far as um, the collection process goes 
we can put just about anybody on the back of a truck as far as collection. We can get seasonal help to do that. But you can't do that for the operators of the trucks. And so in the wintertime, we go from three trucks. And in the summertime, we go to, well, three trucks in the winter, five days a week, to six trucks in the winter, um, summer, um, seven days a week. And, um, and keeping also in mind that that's when a lot of our employees like to take time off to be with their families and vacation. So it really, really does. It's very challenging for us to, um, to do the trash and recycling collection um, efficiently because in main part because of that change of volume of, of our collections. Um, two years ago, three years ago, when the town decided to take over the recycling program, from waste management, there was a concept of hiring in order to add, to, to provide additional manpower to take on that work, we would add two 32-hour a week employees uh, that would be on the back of the packer. And that's what we've done and that was budgeted for. Uh, that hasn't worked out all that well. Uh, working, someone working just four days a week um, is, is, it's better than nothing, but it's not highly productive. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've looked at that and trying to work in, con and right now both of those two positions are vacant because the two people that were in those positions have been promoted to permanent positions within ta at, at Public Works. So we have these two openings. So what we looked at, and I worked very closely with um, Frank Swift, uh, my highway foreman on this, is looking how can we get the biggest bang for the buck recognizing that we are on a default budget and an unlimited budget. And we did the math and we came up with uh, being able to take the, the, the amount of money that's in the budget now for the two 32-hour week positions and realign that money to create one 40-hour week position year-round and then have a second position that would be 40, hour, 40 hours a week for just three months in our heaviest time during the summer. And also, there's another piece of that is that we have budgeted for five laborers in the summer, five days a week, and I know this gets confusing, um, in five days a week, but now that we're not picking up residential trash on Fridays for the most part, we don't necessarily need those five employees for the five days, five or six employees for the full five days a week. So we're going to cut back, I believe it was four or five employees to work four days a week, and this is just for unskilled labor positions. We actually think that probably some of the kids that we have working for us, the high school kids, wouldn't mind having a three-day weekend, so we're not too concerned that, you know, we wouldn't be able to attract people. But that by doing this, and it would all fit within the confines of our existing budget, that would be a lot more productive than having the 232-hour a week positions. And that's my request. I can go into more detail. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. But basically, we're looking at getting more 40-hour a week positions year-round and um, in, in doing away with the 32-hour a week positions. And the other, pro the 32-hour a week positions will be problematic come next year mm -hmm. when the new health insurance regulations come into play because we're not going to be able to have anyone working for more than 28 hours anyway. So then if we cut back to 32 hours to 8, 28, to try to, we'd have someone working a half a day, one of the days a week, or, you know, maybe three days, three and a half days. Or, you know, right now we have four eight-hour days with 32, but then to go to 28. So we just feel internally that this would be a good thing. It would be a lot more productive, and it would be a big help to us here at Public Works. Thank you. Does that conclude your contributions for your manpower report? Yes. All right. Selectman Wolsey, thank you, sir. I appreciate the creativity that's gone into your structuring <coughs> this. I consider this as a finger in the dike because for next year's budget, I think we have to do more serious planning as to how we are going to maintain your department. When the town discontinued recycling pickup by waste management, uh, there was no real plan for the extra burden that went on to the Public Works Department. Same staff, same people, same trucks. Well, we got the, the big mechanicals, but 
uh, basically no allowance for that. Uh, it doubled everyone's workload and in addition we have been building and building and building and building and so far a board of selectmen has not seen fit, including last year's board, to give specific direction to the planning board and they have asked for specific direction to stop allowing new developments to count on the town for waste pickup. Somewhere here we're going to have to draw a line. I don't see how this department can continue doing anything of substance other than waste pickup in the summer, which is the most productive time for the highway business. I don't see how we can continue to do this, and I am going to bring up later on in our agenda a motion for this board to direct the planning board to tell all new developments that they are under, they have no expectation of, of waste pickup um, from the town. Uh, I know people get all excited after the election in March and said, oh, how wonderful, everybody supported continuing to pick up waste. But just because the public didn't direct us to not pick it up, we're going to have to start sitting here really rethinking what we're doing. Uh, I had an opportunity to look at our latest uh, financial report when I sat down here, and there is zero revenue, zero, zero revenue so far this year for recyclables zero revenue. As long as I've got you, I might as well do my speech before you go all the way through and you'll be touching on a lot of what I'm uh, saying. Uh, the sewer buy-in, a magnificent job by Chris on that, the, the paperwork and the uh, presentation on the sewer buy-in, very well done. Um, Fred has told me that we are going to need a Warren article next year so that we can segregate the revenue from the buy-in uh, may I may I just make a yes. point of order? There there are okay. there are, we well, go I know through we've got a lot. yeah we go through Alpha through Delta and Alpha. we're 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 specifically dealing with Bravo right now, which is manpower report. There were questions specifically on the manpower report, okay. and, and and you, we can talk old business. You can bring up um, select okay. rules. Well, I want to choose. bring a few things up while Keith okay. is here. Can okay, we, and then maybe we you, we could have your your comments um, yep. when he's done, but uh, like specifically okay. on manpower. Yeah, thank you. Any any for questions on manpower like when was that? Well, they, we're too we're too we're under we're undermanned, understaffed, and have no time to do the work that needs to be done in the summer. Okay. How's that? That's that's fine. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Uh, good report, Keith. I think you're I think you're trying to do with what you have mm -hmm. for right now. Um, I commend you for that. Um, uh, I kind of agree with Mary Louise that it's kind of like a finger in the dike and we really need to continue to look at this. Uh, I'm in full support of you doing this because it's yeah. you're within your budget. You're also, you, you've worked at that and, and you've found the best way you can bang for the buck. <laughs> um, but we do need to look at it. As, as she said, you know, we when we took over recycling, it came with no manpower and that was you were, that was set up to fail at that time because of that. And so, um, I, I, I'll make a motion if you want. So well, desire, let's, if you let's want continue. Okay. I want to continue. Comments, right. please. Go ahead. That's all right. Sorry. Good, good report, Keith. Uh, Thank you. And I'm going to agree with Rusty and, and Mary Louise. Is this a short term or, or yes, right? It, but something that needs to be done now. Yes, mm -hmm. you feel right. And with what would it, what would, does it do to benefits if you, you create those two forty? It gives us more stability. Um, having when someone works 32 hours a week, and I don't want to reference it that we're not getting the best help that we can yeah. get because the two that we have been using are now permanent employees. So this isn't a reflection mm -hmm. on them, but I think people that are working 40 hours a week are more invested in the in the in the town, uh, for one thing. And I think there's more stability there. And just from a planning purpose, you know, we know that they're going to be there for the most part five days a week. Uh, working out the actual man hours, it comes out be, to be about the same, actual man hours. But I think it's more to do better work planning and knowing what we have and, and having more of that loyalty and the commitment because they are, you know, full-time mm -hmm. members of the staff. Good. Thank you. You all set, sir? Yes. Great. Uh, director. Uh, we've got uh, other branches of uh, uh, executive leadership to include fire, to include uh, 
um, police to include the headquarters element and uh, is it is it uh, requisite upon this board and, and through the town manager for us to approve this or is, is statute and customary practice is it, is it appropriate for the uh, director to um, use his man as he sees fit as long as he's within budget and budget line items sir uh, mr. chairman you're, you're going to change the work hours of employees um, this has got to go through the union it may have to be impact bargaining these, these positions have not play. been part of the union it doesn't make any difference these positions are in the organization and the organization says any full-time and part-time employees mm -hmm. are eligible to be members in the union mm -hmm. it's got to go through the union whether they're members or not is immaterial because the union controls this through mm -hmm. the, the collective bargaining agreement yeah. so that's got to happen before we can do anything and that may have to be uh, bargained um, before anything can happen so we, we, we need there's another threshold we need to go across to get something done I think what you're asking for with the board is generally speaking is the board in support of this they can't vote on it because there's another element that has mm -hmm. to take place uh, and should we work towards that goal I think that's what you're asking uh, may I ask the yes, manager? Ma you're talking about a sidebar basically are you uh, this or may be impact bargaining because it oh. deals with uh, taking part-time employees and making them permanent employees. Oh, okay. So that, that okay. could have a big change. I just don't know. Okay. Depends I on am the union fully in support it. of what the director is trying to do. Wonderful. And of course, uh, our uh, town attorney, uh, uh, Attorney Robinson, will get a, uh, a chop on this as well. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll staff that appropriately. Uh, uh, I think you can understand there's a consensus to support your initiative. Thank you. And uh, continue to staff it, please, sir. Mm -hmm. And Thank moving you. on, um, Charlie, wastewater system development charge. Our charges report wastewater system development charge and wastewater system development rules and regulations, sir. Thank you. Um, this was a request of the board uh, for me to work on, um, which I have. I was the one that did prepare this report. Um, I did similar work for the town of Exeter a number of years ago when I was working there. It came up, we call it a sewer assessment fee. And they've had it in place for, probably for about 20 years. Uh, actually, it's still the same amount. It was 485 gallons. So, and I was instrumental in, in working with a consultant from Portland, Maine, on development of that program. So um, I'm <coughs> confident putting this together. Um, basically, what we're talking about here is requiring new growth in this community developers to pay for the ability to, to connect into the sewer system. And I guess what I use it as an example is, and this may not be the best example, but if you were built, if you had a house that you had built and and you decided to invite a relative to move in and have a part of that house and you said well in order for you to move in we're going to have to put a five th ten thousand dollar addition on the house but you're not going to get into it we're not going to allow you just to or have you just pay ten thousand dollars because we've spent two hundred thousand dollars to build the house mm -hmm. so you're going to have to kick in a portion of what it costs to build the house in addition to the amount of the addition that you know it's going to necessitate uh, some cost so basically this is a process that is used by a number of communities not only in New Hampshire but across the country and it's a um, and it's a good system it's defendable in court the way I've got it set up here and um, I think that I, you know I prepare a report if you have any specific questions again it's a little bit complicated to go into every single detail here that's why I wanted to give you the report last week but I am confident that uh, this could be a good way to help fund very necessary improvements to the plant that we're already facing now thank you Selectman Wilson um, Fred and um, Keith we have three separate documents you have the wastewater development charge it says effective May 12th I assume that you're looking for us to vote on that but then you have the uh, rules and regulations now is that something we can do independently Fred is that something that has to go on the warrant now that we have levying power it doesn't have to go on the warrant the board the board has authority to do both okay and then the charge report is backup information this correct. particular that item is, is backup information so that it can be explained to the public okay um, as you know I've been making a pain of myself 
lobbying for this. Fred tells me that we are going to have to put, we're going to have to get some authorization, Fred, help me out, in order to get the fund set up. Actually, no, the fund is set up simply by your vote. Oh, okay. Okay. And the treasurer uh, holds the money. In incoming cash is, is held in accordance with the statute mm -hmm. uh, by the treasurer. Uh, those funds can be spent by the board uh, to pay, and it's similar to the school, to pay for the improvements to the wastewater treatment plant. So once the town votes to make improvements, let's say we vote a million dollar bond uh, and we have um, five hundred thousand dollars in this account. We can we can then spend that five hundred thousand towards that million. So we only have to raise half as much. Uh, that's that's the intent of it. Uh, if if we're currently paying off bonds for the plant, then a, a, a retro portion of the money could go to help pay for that each year. So it, it does have an effect against the tax rate, exactly the same way the school's money has an effect against the tax rate. Anytime we do that, with the school in particular, because that's what we're doing now, right. uh, the Department of Revenue is notified and an automatic credit against the tax rate is applied at the time the correct tax rate is set mm -hmm. because that money is given to the school to help pay off the bond. The bond, right. Now, ultimately, this can be used for the um, gorilla in the closet at such time as we may be directed to start planning a new facility. As the state and federal government increase their standards, posturing <laughs> <laughs> with regards to wastewater treatment plants, and and change the uh, the components of which the plant is is made, and the input of how the treatment is done, mm -hmm. that will mean that we'll have additional. <laughs> got to purchase and put in place. Mm -hmm. We talked for a number of years of the ocean outfall, for instance. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, that will come to fruition. Whether we want it to or not is immaterial. Uh, sooner or later, it will come because right now we're dumping in the marsh, even yes. though the material yeah. is treated. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and there are copper limits which are stringent, and other limits which copper happens to be the big one everybody talks about right now, but that are stringent and we'll have to adhere to. At some point, those requirements are going to go above our ability to continue to uh, put the, the treated water into the, into the marsh and have it just mm -hmm. flow out through the river into the ocean. We're going to have to have an outfall. That's a very expensive proposition. It requires a large bond. We're going to have to pay for that somehow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what we're really doing here is we're selling the remaining capacity of the plant yeah. in, in, in layman's terms. Yeah. Uh, you bring your building in and it's going to generate a million gallons worth of sewage and uh, we're going to sell you a portion of the plant that represents that million gallons. Mm -hmm. That's reserved for you. Nobody else can come in and get that again because that million gallons is being tallied by the state. Every time we add a house, every time we add an addition to a house, every time we add, add a new commercial building or an industrial building, the state gets a report from us and they look at the big sheet and they say you have 60% capacity left, you now have 59% capacity left or 55% capacity left depending on how much influent your exfluent you're, br you're bringing into the plan's influent. We have to pay for that somehow because the current taxpayers of the town have built it and they're paying for it and they're maintaining it and they're operating on an annual basis. This reimburses their expense for future years. Mm -hmm. I've still got more if the chairman will bear with me on Keith's report. Bottom of page two, revenue from sewer discharge fees or uh, sewer discharge, whatever, however you did this, the sewer development charge. The establishment of a special revenue fund should be considered for the retention of funds accumulated by the charge to be held until such time as the Board of Selectmen authorize the expenditure of these funds for sewer system improvements. Then it says, Town of Rye and Northampton, bless you. If the present agreement for treatment and disposal of wastewater dated October 1989 with the town allows, consideration should be given to exact an SDC for new discharges to that community. And that is, should be next on our plate, do you think? The well? agreements don't allow for that. They don't allow for that. They don't allow for that. At all. What happens here is that when we do an improvement to the plant, 
a portion of that improvement oh, is right. billed annually. Oh, okay. So there, it's a pay as you go kind of. Exactly. They're paying part of the the debt oh, okay. that they're contributing to. Well, it was a nice thought. I liked that thought when I read it. <laughs> okay. No, I'm all set. We, I think we've talked about we it. We need to publicize. Oh, absolutely. I think it's a it's a yeah. uh, it's about some about time we have something like this. It's similar to the uh, the uh, um, impact fees we pay for the school. Yeah. Right. Help fund that as we go along. Mr. Waddell. I just have a couple of questions. Feedback, have you had feedback on this from from builders or anything? Has anybody, no. do they know this is coming or? Um, it actually came up. We have uh, developed, we had a pre-construction meeting a couple of weeks ago and it did came up, come up. Okay. Uh, Percent of towns that do this? You, you said you know there are towns that do it. Do you know what a percentage in New Hampshire? I don't know, uh, to be honest with you, how many towns do this, but I do know that there's a number of them. Exeter, Summersworth, and there's some Over. others. Uh, Dover. Okay. There's a few others. That and, Fred, the money can only be used for wastewater, right? I mean, it, that is this correct. Right. Collected, there's it no can only way be used for the physical plant. For the physical plant. It can't be used to put piping in the ground. Okay. It can't be used for anything like that. It has to be used at the plant itself. Yeah, yeah. Aeration uh, tanks. Yes, that oh, that's part of the plant mechanism. Yes, and and from from a legal point of view, do you think? That, I mean, I don't know. You might be the town attorney, but would there be any problem like the the, the group on the west side that's grandfathered when they connect? Would somebody say, "Well, gee, they weren't connected now"? I mean, would that ever mm -hmm. like uh, somebody building a new place and connecting, right? Yeah, they're going to pay it, right? Yeah, but if you had people who are on septic now, when they, if the sewer ever goes over there and they connect, mm -hmm. would it ever come up that somebody could say, well, they really shouldn't mm -hmm. be able to, I mean, would it ever, and I'm just throwing this out, would it ever get into that kind of thing that... I've actually mentioned in here that if they are already getting a sewer uh, abatement, then they would not have to pay the special okay. sewer assessment. Right. right. So that would, we're, and we're, mm -hmm. we're confident that that would, would mm -hmm. stand. Yes. Right. The only the only ones I, I believe it wouldn't happen with is if somebody ha had a piece of property that didn't have sewer, but right. sewer passed by their house. Right. Yes, and had they're not entitled to a right. abatement right. because they right. they've had that a chance okay. to hook up to it and didn't. Right. Okay. But if if they've got the sewer abatement, that was because they weren't able yeah. to hook into it, so they would be. Yeah. And the other thing is that if, if a piece of property changed its usage, then. They would have to add something to it, like if it already if it's connected Correct. to the sewer now, but then it changes. Mm -hmm. Correct. We would take their existing use of sewage that they have, and then they would get a credit for that amount and any additional amount above and beyond historically what they've been using. That's what the fee would be based right. on. Okay. And and if something's in the process of being built right now, I I'd say that if the board enacts this tonight, that as the applications come in, we deal with them starting tomorrow. You know, that's what I would recommend. Legislation can't be retrospective. So anybody who's building now that currently has a permit to connect to the sewer would not. Right, charge. but if they haven't, if we haven't, yeah, if we haven't, if yeah. we haven't executed the permit, then yeah. as of tomorrow they would be. Yeah. But if they, you're right, if they've yeah, already charged. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And one more question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Have a piece of property that was destroyed a number of years ago. Um, had say a motel on it, um, somebody building a new building on that, would they get credit for what that property had before? Yes, okay. they would. And we would go back into the historical use of what of they had. Yeah. 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 That sewer connection would still be there. Right. Be we capped, but it would still be there. Right. We can tell you one more thing. When sewer goes over to the west side, everybody will be so happily dancing, they might not even think to ask about <laughs> this initially. Oh, I think they'll ask. I'm sure. <laughs> 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 Any further questions from board members? I'm number? set. Okay. Thank you. Uh, has this been shopped by the town attorney? Yes. yes. It has been. And uh, no changes, no additions? His no changes have been incorporated into the final document. Thank you very much, sir. Well, we there a motion. Well, I, so I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. So this thread is what we are moving tonight, the rules and regulations. You're moving that, plus you're moving the, s the development charge, which is the rate. The actual rate. Okay. So uh, one you have to sign time. the rules and regulations, which allow you to have the rate. Okay. One at a time? Uh, or you can do them collectively. I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Our rules and regulations 
And this is going to come under what? This is going to come in under our ordinances? I just want to it will, it will eventually go in the ordinances, yes. Okay. That's correct. I will be delighted to move the Town of Hampton Wastewater System Development Charge, effective May 12, 2014, rules and regulations. Uh, you don't want me to read the whole thing, Mr. Chairman, but uh, we are going to publicize <laughs> Is the section one for authority, section two purpose, section three rates and charges for capital costs, section four construction of new sewer collection systems, section five wastewater system development charge assessed when, section six development charges shall be paid when, section seven adjustments to charges, section eight funds collected, deposited, held, section nine expenditure restricted, Section 10, Development Charge Calculation. And this is a very happy evening for me. And that was for the development charge? Just for the rules and regs. The rules and regs. And how about the development charge? Let's well, incorporate this into one motion. And, and right, we've got a consensus. Let's, let's get it in motion. And I will incorporate the Wastewater System Development Rate Charge effective May 12, 2014 as well which dictates how the charges, how and when the charges apply. Thank you. A second? I'll second. Mr. Bridal, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, Delta, waiver for bid award spot herbicide applications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we just put out the bid for herbicide control, and this is to have a company come in and spray for uh, weeds around town between the curbing and the sidewalks to keep the weeds from growing up in between that area and also around the perimeter of the landfill to keep the weeds down from growing into the fence. Uh, there's not a lot of people that do this type of work. We only had two interested bidders. Uh, a low bidder, uh, fortunately, has been doing the work for us in the past. They've done an excellent job and they have a great reputation in the seacoast area. And as you can see, if you look at the numbers, the uh, second bidder is uh, over twice what the mm -hmm. low bidder is. So we're just asking for a waiver from the bid process to accept only two bids. Thank you, sir. Questions? I do have a quick question because the other thing that I went through this weekend is this. The NPDES small MS4 general permit annual report. And they're talking about pesticides and... Uh, items going into the water flow, et cetera. How do we match this up with this report? Are we doing anything anywhere where this is going to get into the groundwater? No. In fact, they have to get a license from the state. Part of the requirement is they get okay. the license, the company gets <coughs> the license for authority to do this. Right. Okay. To do the work. Anything else, Selectman Wilson? No, thank you. Sir. All set. All set. <coughs> a motion, please. I'll make a motion that we uh, go with his recommendation and um, waive the bid. Waive the bid. I'll um, second the rest Thank you. Uh, further discussion? I will just add that uh, it does not comply with the uh, purchasing policy. That is um, correct. But it has been identified, and the discrepancy is there have not been three bidders. Uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, Director, if we could uh, just have you stay on board. There's a selectman's policy drainage easement that uh, is on the agenda, if we could move that up uh, to this this uh, time right now, so you're here. And I still have a couple of comments that I want to... Okay, well, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's back off that, and then let's continue with the... Um, um, uh, actually, what I'd like to do is, uh, those are the uh, agenda items. Are, are, are you going to be asking the director questions that he's prepared for? Are you going to just um, be commenting? I, I have a few comments that I want to share um, publicly with all of you and with Keith. Yes, ma'am, the floor is, is yours. Is that all right? That, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, the floor is yours. <coughs> yes, uh, as Fred mentioned, in lieu of impact fees, um, I am delighted to see the sewer development charge come on board. Um, as I read through your staffing report and request, um, it really got me to thinking, and also, if you gentlemen have not read that yet, you need to, as I went through that this weekend. The pressures on this department are tremendous. This department has traditionally been treated as a stepchild, even though it is the largest department uh, in our community. Um, sewers and drains, roads, uh, 
if you look in here, it's talking about infiltration, excess water, and sometimes carrying pollutants, et cetera, coming into the system. We are so far behind, not just with staffing at Public Works, but with planning. I went out to uh, the mailbox Saturday, our mailbox Saturday morning, to drop the bag with the uh, food for the food drive. And our mailboxes are across the street. And usually my daughter picks up the mail because she gets home before I do. But I happened to be out there and I'm looking. And I was standing there looking. And the mailman, of course, swings in, put the mail in the mailboxes. And there is now a good-sized trench in the shoulder of the road. And the hot drop is starting to crumble. I mentioned to Fred a week or so ago where the public works uh, gentlemen, out of the kindness of their heart, rescued a homeowner who was out there shoveling up chunks of asphalt and raking up and trying to make her lot look presentable so the town looked nice at that intersection. There's a half moon shape of pavement at the edge on the shoulder crumbling. We're damaging our roads because we have the manpower to keep up with the shoulders of the roads. When's the last time you had sh crews out there doing shoulders of the roads? All right? That's the road. I, I, mean, I had to beg ago. and make a fuss for four duck signs, which are up and they're wonderful, thank you. We still have no through tucking signs to go up. The summer, when you are knocking yourself out with seven day a week trash collection, is the time when we should be doing the sidewalks. We should be doing the sweeping. By the way, that I assume that was the new sweeper I saw today. What a heck of a dust pile. Eek. There's no way to... Uh, I'm not sure that was the oh, new sweeper. Well, there was a great no, big sweeper so. out there today, and it, the dust was no, really wild on High Street. Anyway, um, the, the ordinary maintenance, uh, potholes, shoulders, signs, <coughs> tree trimming, you're stuck. And it's summer, and you're not going to do this when the weather turns bad. So you are really in a terrible bind with this department. And I would like to see us seriously this fall when we are putting together the budget requests. I, I really, we need an in-depth plan and overview of this department. And if you'd be so kind, Keith, as to see that we get a, uh, an updated rolling stock list. What happened to those five pickups, guys? Are they still with the department? Have you offloaded them? Which five what, pickups? Well, Fred said that we, he thought five no, pickups. No, they're working on that plan now for the 2015 <coughs> budget, uh, budget, and uh, which will be budgeted cycle pretty soon, and, and the long-range cap program with it. So. All right. And we just met last Friday to update the uh, rolling stock program for yeah. 2015. We need a total, complete. Um, in-depth review yep. of what you're doing and if when you're n the new equipment so you don't have the sweeper yet right no okay so when we get the sweeper and the other two pieces of equipment if you just see that we've got each got an updated rolling stock list for now yeah <coughs> that would be very helpful <coughs> I am concerned that we are really losing the grip on what public works does for this town roads potholes shoulders all the maintenance work that needs to be done in their limited good weather season. And we are so far behind. I, I have no idea what we're going to do with, with the sewers. I have no clue. And the sewers are crumbling away. So I just want to express to you, you are doing a Herculean task. And you know Hercules tried to sweep out whatever that stable was. And I'm not going to mention... Those the Argean stables. Like the Argean stable. Yes, it was. And it had you-know-what in it. But I'm not going to say that. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure the classical scholars who are observing will know what poor Hercules was trying to shovel out. But basically, that's what you're doing. And, and I, I really feel for the department. And I also feel for the services that this community is entitled to from Public Works. And I am really worried. So there, I said it. Thank you, ma'am. I have a sir. Just a couple quick and and through you. I, uh, one is um, <coughs> I had a, a phone call from from somebody on the uh, old stage bridge. Ah. If if you've ever been over there, it is beautiful. It's a great walking area, but everything's been done except paving of about the last 
50 feet right by the bridge and there's dirt washing down on the bridge and it's made ruts and so if that's something you could look at I would really appreciate that the other one is uh, as we voted a couple weeks ago on crosswalks painting could we look at the area of 401 Lafayette Road and see if that warrants a crosswalk there huh. I know they've been um, some of the businesses in there have been swapping off parking which we've all talked about parking downtown an area and they have yeah. so people are crossing the road there a lot and it, however the way is to do it is if that would be an area to warrant a crosswalk if while we're out paying the crosswalks could we have one in that area that's a good thought so mm. anything else mr. Barber? that would be sure thank you sir uh, yeah I agree with what's been said that your, your department's doing a great job your department's understaffed you know and I think all the departments need to be looked at and, and figure out staffing I think that everybody does a great mm -hmm. job and I think Hampton's growing and I think I think you know people have to realize what's happening and I think it's our responsibility to publicize and re educate the public so that so that they know that what's being spent is being spent wisely and being used wisely and uh, is going well but I, you're doing a great job and yeah. need help thank you. thank you very much sir if we may move to uh, Roman 8 and move that up new business selectman's policy drainage easements mr. Welch I would like to give you the floor for the uh, <coughs> lead in please mr. chairman this uh, this policy started uh, um, seven eight months ago yes. we started having discussions about the town being placed in the position of being the the backup for all of the uh, uh, subdivisions that were created by the planning board as far as the maintenance of drains and drainage areas and drainage fields and so on and so forth and at that time the board said we need to have some sort of a written policy so we started putting this together uh, so that we would have some guidelines to operate by and I can tell you that uh, as of the last planning board meeting which was last week um, they did at my request amend the um, subdivision regulations mm -hmm. to take us out of the drainage business in subdivisions so we no longer have that in the subdivision regulations but we do have and it's, uh, it's probably ironic because the same day they voted to take us out of that position one of the ones that they had done in the past failed and we are in fact in the line to, to repair it if, if that organization that, that, that owns it does not um, and we are actively trying to solve that problem now we have a number of these sitting out there only the Lord knows at this point how many there are uh, in order to keep us from going absolutely crazy uh, this process was, was uh, put down on paper so that we have some direction and the board has some direction when we're talking about what do we do with open swales and closed drainage and mm -hmm. drainage easements and maintenance requirements and what we're doing here is we're shifting that those requirements onto the individuals who are causing the drain easements to be put in place yes. instead of on the taxpayer um, most of these drain easements service a particular piece of property and not the town uh, they're there to keep that particular piece of property from flooding or having problems if it's a town drain that's one thing we'll take responsibility for that and easements not required uh, but these are private easements and, and uh, we don't really wish to become embroiled in those obviously we don't have enough manpower to maintain our existing drain systems so um, this was to set some sort of a policy or the beginnings of a policy that will allow us to control those areas of drainage thank you uh, and this will uh, let, oh. let me just get the director in here then we'll go to questions please ma'am sir totally agree with everything you just said <laughs> I'm on board with this very much so great you're shut off it's like <laughs> that's why you get here early <laughs> see uh, this will go where uh, Fred will this go in our um, ordinances as well where I just want to know where we can find this this will be in the code book the under code the book. selectman's portion okay and the planning board will have an official copy of this oh, yes every every agency in the town will have an official copy and you were pleased to remind them of this the other evening I think it's unconscionable for developers to come in to create a situation in a neighborhood that's a problem and leave the planning board needs to be well aware of this and make really sure that that it's clear all around and did you mention something about the deeds the other night 
that the, the responsibility should be reflected uh, when an association is put together that has one of these easements? They need to take care of their own, so to speak. They own the property. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a requirement to maintain it. Uh, what's happened in the past, and this, this is not the only town it's happened in, I know, I've been on a number, uh, where all of a sudden there's a failure and the, the homeowners association, the condo association, or whoever, depending upon the circumstances, turns around and says, I'm sorry, we can't fix this. Town, you'll have to take care of it. Right. And then we're placed in a position of taking care of it, put, putting the, um, the dollar values together to do that, yeah. and then f literally, in some cases, being forced to sue the homeowners association or the condo association to collect the money. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Usually what happens is we get a lien against the property, and then we have to go back to court to try to foreclose the lien. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Okay. Anything else, Selectman like Wilson? No, thank you. This is great. I'm okay. glad to see progress. Yes. Sir. I'm all set at this time. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. All set. The board's pleasure for motion, please. I will so move that we accept the draft of the drainage easements. A second. I'll second. Mr. Bridal, second. All those in favor? Mr. Waddell. Yes. yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Director, thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Approval of minutes. <laughs> you don't want to hang around and. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so move that we accept the minutes of, I haven't got the minutes, 28 help, April. the 28th 28 of April. April. <laughs> Any corrections? I a second? A second. Those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, before I get into my regular report, I just want to, uh, I sent you a memorandum today. I will be on vacation uh, June 17th to 20th, the 22nd. I'll be going to my annual International Youth Conference um, this year. It's in Kansas City. And I would request respectfully that you appoint Jamie Sullivan, the Chief of Police, to be the Acting Town Manager during that period of time. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. A second. Second. Uh, All those in favor? Yep. yep. Unanimous. Thank you. And yes, sir. Thank I'll you. I stipulate that the manager come back in one piece. Oh, I have every intention of doing that. <laughs> Being shipped in separate packages is not, <laughs> not my method of preferred travel. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the town clerk has asked me to advise you and the, the citizens of the town that the town clerk's office will be closed on Wednesday, May 21st in order for the staff to attend the annual state training which is required. Oh, good. Please plan your business with the town clerk accordingly. We'll make that announcement next week again as well. Please remember, well, the household has this waste day was last weekend. Um, everything, excuse me, it's this weekend. Uh, this Saturday the 17th at the old courthouse site of Winnicott Road. Collections will take place starting at uh, 8 a.m. and will end at 12 noon. The system they've had set up in the past is they'll, they'll place someone at the end of the line. Whoever is in line at 12 noon, regardless of where the line ends, they're going to place a police officer there, and that'll be the end of the line. Well, um, so come get aligned and let's take care of your household hazardous <laughs> waste. Please review the town website because the flyer is on there. There are some items that they will take, but they have to be charged for because they, they do require a payment to get rid of them and pro properly process them. Um, also, please remember for those of you who are, are somewhat noise sensitive that the police department is engaged in firearms training in the public works facility on Haddad's Way. Uh, through the coming Sunday, May 18th. This is daytime training, so if you hear some strange and unaccustomed noises while you're out in your yard, uh, it'll be the police department doing their qualification firing at the public works facility. Um, the town has a number of board and committee vacancies. Uh, the openings are listed on the town website. We request that you please send a letter to the Board of Selectmen expressing your interest in serving. We even take an email uh, if you'd like to send that as well to, to the uh, selectman's office or to my office. Uh, we'd like to get those items in so the board can do their appointments as soon as possible and fill up those vacancies that we currently have. Uh, I did talk to uh, Mr. Schroeser today and he has given you tonight a copy of the financial report for the month of April. Yep. Uh, he will be in <coughs> next week to discuss that report with you. So he had requested that you review it and have any questions available, please ask him. 
Uh, he'd like to get through it in grand style and, and do his retirement. Um, I believe we mentioned earlier that uh, uh, you were all invited on the 30th from eight, uh, 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, to do the ribbon cutting at the um, Smutty Nose Brewery. You've been officially invited. Um, it should be quite a shindig. Uh, we did receive a CIP adjustment in the Consumer Price Index of the Boston region as published during the month of March. Uh, this is for waste management. This is for the um, sludge. sludge to be taken from the wastewater treatment plant to the, to the landfill, drawn from 62.72 per ton to 63.79 per ton. And for the grit and screenings, we'll be increasing from 68.42 to 69.58. That becomes effective July 1st of this year. Um, and that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Questions for the town manager, Selectman Wilson. Um, that's. I just let me hand those to Certainly. you. What? Uh oh. Did we do this? Yes. We've got papers up the zoo here. Um, I have spoken with Fred briefly, and this is just preliminary. But uh, after attending. The planning board meeting last week, obviously Rusty was there, filling in for Rick Griffin, and Fred was there, and, and Mark, and I was there. I think we've reached a point here where uh, the planning board needs help. Um, I know that we're in the process of trying to hire a planner, and we have, what, temporary help from the RPC, Fred? No, sir. No, ma'am, we do not. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, we do need help. Uh, I was looking at uh, one of the appointments last Wednesday night where the petitioners actually had three attorneys with them. <laughs> In fairness to the planning board, they are volunteers. They have functioned for a number of years without really adequate guidance. And now uh, Fred and uh, council have stepped in and certainly they're... Uh, their presence has been uh, important. But I think we need to consider the possibility, and I'm, Fred will know the legalities here, of having council, um, probably not town council because he's, he's in over his head already, having a council uh, for the planning board. Uh, I, they, if they are sitting there, and Rusty will remember, and Fred, uh, Wednesday night, there were some very serious pronouncements made. Uh, this is how it is, and this is how it works, and this is the law. And how are members of the planning board to understand? None of them have law degrees. None of them have the ability to research. May, may, I, may I, a point of order, inter interrupt just for a second, ma'am? Uh, who is the liaison or member for the planning board on this board? Mr. Mr. Griffin. Griffin. And just out of respect to his billet as, oh. as the uh, representative, I would like... Is, is a point of order to defer the discussion when he's here. Right. He is the rep, and uh, uh, if we could if we could agree on that, we can push back. You if we may ask points. Fred to give it some thought for us and put it on the agenda, um, an, uh, the next agenda or two. Right, and I, I think, uh, think Selectman Griffin will not be back in, at the next meeting either. Actually, Mr. Chairman, we really can't do anything about it because we statutorily have no authority with the planning board. They have the statutory authority to do this. We can suggest it to them. Okay. But they have to do this. They're the ones who can right. hire employees <coughs> for that particular agency and no one else okay. by statute. It's it's probably time to give some thought. So if yes, ma'am, chew it over and maybe yeah. ask, uh, maybe even send a, a letter or some suggestions to the planning board. I think it it's time for them to get help. Any further questions or comments? That's Selectman no criticism of the planning board. Further questions or comments, Selectman Wilson? No. Okay, thank no. you. Mr. Bright. Nope, nothing. Still down. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, sir. Roman 7, old business. Yes. Selectman Wilson. I move that we send a letter to the planning board to comply with their request, which goes back to. 2013 and direct them to explain to any new developments 
including private roads and condominiums and commercial, this does not apply to residential, that the town of Hampton will no longer be responsible for collecting either waste or recyclables at these locations. We have got to start getting out from under the waste load. Was that a motion? That is my motion. Is there a second? Hello? Seeing none. Any other comments keep or questions? Drowning under the under the mess. No? Okay, thank you. Selectman Bridal? Old business? Nothing. Sir. Nothing. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we have addressed the Selectman's policy drainage easement, mm -hmm. Roman 9, entertainment licenses under review, 1, the Victoria Inn, 430 High Street, Roman 10, closing comments, seeing none, motion? Um, oh, now you get the motion all excited here. <laughs> we need, first of all, I think that Fred and Mark have done a remarkable job with uh, the planning board uh, allowing for the fact that there has been a vacancy and the planning board has been pretty much flying on its own. Uh, so I, I really think they deserve serious thanks because that's been quite a burden. And I do uh, implore the members of the board to start giving some serious thought about scaling back on the waste. We have got to scale back on the waste collection and I will bring the issue up again after you've had time to meditate. Thank you. A motion for adjournment, please. I will so move that we adjourn at precisely 8 p.m. Second. Second. Those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.